far three different distance measures for computing the distance between two words and what we saw was that the first two of these measures edit distance and weighted edit distance are used for spelling correction in two ways the first way is to take the query define a threshold edit distance say 2 enumerate all strings that are at an edit distance of less than or equal to 2 from the query look up which of those enumerated alternatives are found in the dictionary take the uh, take the intersection of that particular set of alternatives with the terms in the dictionary and then look at the edit distance as well as uh, the, look at the value of the edit distance as well as the collection frequency to figure out which is the closest word to the query closest and most likely uh, spelling suggestion for that particular query the other alternative using these edit distance measures was to take the query term and compute the edit distance to every single term in the dictionary and then choose the terms with the smallest edit distance and look at their collection frequencies and sort them according to decreasing order of uh, the collection frequency now both these alternatives were very expensive because we had to do a large number of edit distance calculations in the first case we had to do a large number of calculations or, or transformations to generate the alternatives and in the second solution we had to do a large number of edit distance computations to uh, compute the distance between the query and every term in the dictionary now what we're going to do is we are going to see how the jacquard coefficient which is the third distance measure can be used for spelling correction in a way that is pretty fast we don't have to run the dynamic programming algorithm to compute uh, uh, to, to, to compute the jacquard coefficient between a particular query term and a particular um, dictionary term assuming that we have a k-gram index already generated so let's see how we how we compute the jacquard coefficient from a given query term to all the terms in the dictionary so let's work here with a bigram index okay, so this is a portion of the bigram index there are three dictionary terms in the bigram index note that this bigram index is different from the standard inverted index now let's look at a query term called lord there are three bigrams in it l o o r and r d and what i've shown here is the postings list for those three bigrams l o o r and r d the postings list for the bigram LO will contain all the terms that contain the bigram LO. So alone is one, lower is the other, and sloth is the other in this toy example. Obviously there will be many more in reality. Now suppose I want to compute, so I want to compute all the terms in the dictionary which have two matching bigrams with my query term so recall that the jacquard coefficient is defined as a ratio but before we came to the jacquard coefficient we looked at an absolute thresholding where we say that if the query term has an overlap of more than say three trigrams with a term in the dictionary then it's a good overlap let's start with that because the calculation there is going to be more obvious and uh, we can you know compute the jacquard quotient with a minor tweak of, of that algorithm 
So, one of the things that I want you to think about here is one of the things I want you to remember here is how we did a walkthrough, a pointer walkthrough during our intersection operation in chapters 1 and 2. We are going to do a similar walkthrough here except that instead of two pointers we are going to have three simultaneous pointers walking through these three postings lists. In fact even the solution that we discussed in chapter 1 could have been adapted to incorporate more than two pointers. We had two pointers there when we were taking the intersection of two lists. But if you want to take the intersection of three lists or four lists or five lists, we can do them in one shot by using three pointers or four pointers or five pointers. And in each step of that walkthrough, if we add more pointers, then in each step of that walkthrough, we will increment the pointer that is pointing to the smallest stock ID. But here, of course, we don't have uh, doc IDs. We have terms in the standard inverted index that have been sorted in lexicographic order. So again, the postings list of the biogram index are sorted. And why are they sorted? Precisely to enable this kind of walkthrough. So we are going to have three pointers. Okay, I'm going to call them P1, P2, and P3. And the first thing I want you to visualize is forget about what we are doing uh, in order to compute the Jacquard coefficient or to compute whether or not there is a match. Just think about how we are going to do the walkthrough first. We are going to start with the three pointers pointing to the first terms of the list and in each step we are going to increment the pointer which is pointing to the least term and by least term I mean the term that appears first in lexicographic order. Okay, so if you look at these three terms alone, border and ardent. Alone is the term that appears first in lexicographic order. If you were to look up a dictionary you're going to find alone appearing before these other th these two terms. So we are going to increment P1 to point to the next term. Now in the second step we have lower, border and ardent. Now ardent is the smallest in lexicographic order. So we'll in increment P3 to point to the next term which is border. Now between lower, border and border we now have a tie between P2 and P3. Both of these are pointing to, this, uh, to the smaller term. Lower is later on in lexicographic order. Now when there is a tie we are going to increment both the pointers together. Just as when we had a tie between two pointers and we were using only two pointers for the walkthrough we would increment both the pointers together. That's what we'll do here also. And if we get a tie between all three of them, then we'll increment all three of them together. So, because there is a tie between P2 and P3, we will increment P2 to point to lower, and we will increment P3 to point to card. Now, in the next step, we see that there is a tie between P... No, there's no tie, actually. Uh, we have lore, lore and card. Right? Yeah. So P3 will be incremented to and, and it's going to cross over the end of this list assuming that the list ends here. So P3 is already done. It's, it's reached uh, the end of the list but we still have P1 and P2 to work with. So there's a tie between P1 and P2, so both will be incremented together. P1 here and P2 will point here. Now between P1 and P2, 
P2 is pointing to the smaller term. So now P2 is going to reach the end of the list. And then P1 will reach the end of its list. So you see how this pointer walkthrough is done using three pointers. Right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a calculation step for every uh, snapshot of this walkthrough. Okay, I, I hope the walkthrough itself is clear to you. Now in each step, as we are walking these pointers through, we are going to compute the overlap between the query term and the current term in the bi biogram index that we are examining. Okay, And what is the current term that we are examining? Because you know, in the beginning, we have three pointers pointing to three different terms. So how, how do we define what, what is the current term? Well, the current term is simply the term that is least among the three in lexicographic order. Okay, it is that particular term which is going to be left behind and moved on from. Okay, so the term that's just going to be left behind or the term that appears uh, that is smallest in lexicographic order among all the three terms, that is going to be the current term. Okay, think of that as the current term. So what is the current term at the beginning? It's alone. What was the current term in step two? Ardent. What was the current term in step three? Border. What was the current term in step four? Card. In step five, lower. In step six, morbid. And then sloth. Now notice that if you, if, if you were to lay down the sequence of these current terms, you would get a sorted sequence of all the terms in this entire uh, postings list, the set of postings lists here, in, uh, in alphabetic or lexicographic order. Any questions about this? Now what we're going to do is, in each step of this walkthrough, we are going to compute the overlap between the original query term and the current term that we are examining. So how do we compute the overlap between the query term and let's say the first current term? So the first current term was alone. That's the first current term. So what's the overlap between Lord and alone? It's actually one biogram. And how do we know it's only one biogram? Because there is a single pointer that's pointing to alone. Okay, the other two pointers are pointing to words that appear later. Now note that each of these postings lists correspond to one biogram in the original query. That means if all three pointers are pointing to the same term. Okay, in this case, we in this example, that case never happens. But we do get a case where there are, where there is a term like border or a term like lower, which becomes the current term for two pointers simultaneously. That means that this particular current term, when, when this term becomes current, we can say at that stage that there are two biograms that are common to the query term and this term. Right? When at the beginning we have a single pointer pointing to alone, we can say that there is exactly one biogram that overlaps between the query term and this particular term. Because if there was more than one biogram overlapping, then there would have been other pointers pointing to this term. So that means this term should have appeared somewhere in this postings list and somewhere in this postings list. And obviously it should have appeared at the very beginning because these lists are sorted. So is that clear? How during this walkthrough 
we can trivially compute how many diagrams overlap between the query term and the current term. And what we will do is, we'll say that if the number of overlapping biograms is two or more, we are going to append the current term to an answer list. So just like before, we'll have an answer list to which we will append you know, entries. Earlier we were appending doc IDs to the answer list for creating the result of a search query. Now we are going to append to the answer list terms that have a good overlap with the query term. And these are the good candidates. The terms that are going into the answer list, they are the good candidates. And Note that this answer list can be computed in time proportional to the time it takes for this pointer walkthrough. So we just need a single pass through all these three postings lists in order to compute this answer list. Any questions about this? So this by itself is a um, is a spelling correction algorithm, right? Because for any particular given query term, you can split it into its biograms. So if there are four biograms in the query, you will do a pointer walkthrough with four pointers together. And then you will create this answer list based on whatever threshold you've defined. And the terms that are in the answer list at the end, when you've, when all four pointers have reached the end, then at that stage, the terms in these answer lists are the terms which have a good overlap with the query term. So you can look at their collection frequencies at that stage and then decide which of those um, lexicon terms or, or dictionary terms is the best spelling suggestion for that query term. Right, so taken in itself, this procedure is uh, a spelling correction algorithm in itself. Any questions on this? So if there are no questions, um, yeah, somebody turn on the microphone. Any questions? No, sir. Okay. So maybe one of you can tell me how you would adapt this procedure to compute the Jacquard coefficient between the query term and the current term. Yeah. Uh, so when we are going through this walkthrough, so uh, whenever we have a tie at the current term for um, a value more than the threshold frequency, threshold, mm -hmm. uh, we would so, like increment. So, by the way, so we don't have a threshold on. So when we when we talk about the Jacquard coefficient, we are not talking about this this threshold. Now the threshold will exist for appending a term to the answer list. So let's say, oh, yes. okay, so l let me talk about, so what does the threshold mean here? If, if the Jacquard coefficient between a query and current term is more than some threshold value, let's say it's more than 0.8, then you'll append current term to answer list. So the thresholding works differently when you talk about Jaggard coefficient. Now obviously mm -hmm. you need to compute this first and so you'll need to first explain how you would compute this 
during the walk through sir uh, uh, in this case if there are three lists would it become x intersection y intersection z no remember that we are taking so the jacquard coefficient is defined between a query term and the current term so we are looking at a bigram index here right so oh, okay, what is the sir. what is the definition of jacquard coefficient it's it's the in so x so let x be the the set x is going to be the set of bigrams in the query term and the set y is going to be the set of bigrams in the current term okay now if you have three pointers that means there are three bigrams in the query term yes sir right so if you are doing the walk through with five pointers that means there are five bigrams in the query term and if there is a tie okay if let's say there is a tie between two pointers here that means the number of bigrams in the current term okay one thing you need to note here is you don't need to calculate y separately okay you need to calculate the numerator and the denominator so first question how would you calculate x intersection y what is x intersection x intersection y is the bigrams common to the query and the uh dictionary term and what would that be so like uh, so i mean uh, depending on the query terms of like what what i mean if we so let's, let's say let's look at the first term alone okay so there is a single pointer there are no ties here how many bigrams are common to the query term and the term alone one right because because alone appears in only one of the three lists right these these three lists are the list corresponding to the bigrams in the query term and alone appears in only one of the lists that means alone has only one of the bigrams out of the three in the query term so you can uh, you, you can compute the size of the intersection based on how many pointers are tying for the current term okay so let's look at the step where the current term is border there are two pointers okay which have a tie at border that means the term border has two out of the three bigrams that appear in the query term so this is the number of pointers that have a tie at the at the current term okay uh, sir yeah um the x uh, union y would be the number of uh, the total words that we have generated minus the uh, common ones so suppose we have two borders so we could take as one border and we could calculate the number of words that has been generated in the k diagram index in the k okay the number of bigrams that will be generated by border yeah in this case it would be 9 uh, minus 2 it will be 7 mm. so we have oh, like uh, what alone is 9 like, so all the words that has been generated here alone lower sloth border lower morbid so there are all six words so out of that 6 plus 1 7 8 8 uh, would be the uh, it would be the uh, x uh, union y okay so le let me um uh, let me caution you on one thing when you're looking at border don't look at what these other terms are when you're looking so, at border you're only you're trying to calculate 
the jacquard coefficient between border and lord right so no, no other words come into the picture here when you are computing the jacquard coefficient between lord and border likewise when you are computing the jacquard coefficient between lord and lower the other words are not i mean they are irrelevant right even if they had been present or not present that's not going to make a difference to the value of the jacquard coefficient uh, so is it uh, so the like if the uh, union of the bigrams we generated for lord mm -hmm. and the union of the uh, and the bigrams generated for border like the number of size of that list that's it uh okay in in set theory how do you define like what's the formula so for the set of union it, suppose so you are already be, given the set intersection so it be size of border uh, plus size of lord minus size of uh, border intersection lord yeah so the size of the union is going to be the sum of the sizes of the two sets minus the size of the intersection the size of the intersection is something you already know because that's the number of pointers that are tying at that current term so this is something you know this is also something you know because this is just the total number of pointers that are part of the walk through right because if there are three bigrams that's why you have three pointers what is the size of y so it uh, it it would be the length of border uh, mm -hmm. how many characters are there in that then mm -hmm. whatever uh, minus n whatever the n is uh, n gram index plus 1 okay okay yeah so in this case for a bigram so number of bigrams in border oh so with duplicates we moved also sorry oh r yeah so that's true but as an approximation you can you know as a heuristic you could you could take it as uh, with duplicates because you know let's say there had been duplicates in the query term right so you could have imagined two pointers walking along the same list together right you don't want to actually you don't want to remove duplicates because if there are bigrams appearing multiple times in a word right and if let's take a word like um and let's take so let's take these two query uh, sorry this is the query term and this is the dictionary term now these two sets are not the same right i mean the set of bigrams here if you remove duplicates they would be the same but if you don't remove duplicates then you can see that they are not the same right and i don't know about this you know about the startup so there is a startup called p y a z z z a p a z a okay so it's a startup that's used th 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 that uh, was started by uh, somebody from iit kanpur and uh, they bas their product corresponds to uh, some kind of a di di discussion forum for conducting online courses so if we could have started a piazza group for this class but uh, um, you know it's something you can try out anyway my point is while typing in this particular term somebody could type in an extra z by mistake right and if you were to remove duplicates then you, know, you would not be able to detect the spelling error is that clear yes sir ulna so even though i mentioned a set think of it as a bag rather than as a set okay so think of working with a bag of trigrams rather than a set of trigrams okay what is a bag a bag is a collection of items where duplicates are allowed 
so the answer to this question about what the size of y is is actually simple you can just take it as in case of a biogram index it would just be the length of the term minus 1 right because b o r d e r will have the biograms b o o r r d d e and e r so the first biogram starts from the first letter of the word and the last biogram starts from the penultimate letter in the word right so the number of biograms is the number of letters from the first letter to the penultimate letter which is the length of this string minus 1 so you know what these three values are and you can compute the jacquard coefficient on the fly and if the value of the jacquard coefficient happens to be more than this threshold then you will append that term to the answer list questions so no question sir okay um what i just described is a spelling you know is an independent spelling correction method but you can actually think of combining this method with the edit distance method remember that the previous method we discussed where we want to compute the edit distance between the query term and every term in the dictionary was too expensive it was too expensive because we have to do we have to run the dynamic programming algorithm as many times as the number of terms in the dictionary but if we use this k gram index to calculate the how many terms there are in the dictionary that have a good overlap with the query term if we generate this answer list then we can follow up this method with a, a series of edit distance computations between the query term and every term in the answer list now these are all good candidates so the number of edit distance calculations that you'll have to run is going to be small okay you don't have to run the algorithm for every term in the dictionary you have to run it only for the terms that are in the answer list and if you define your threshold to be high enough then the size of the answer list will hopefully be small of course it will be much smaller than the number of terms in the dictionary um and so you can get the both best of both approaches here by first running this linear time algorithm which will generate the answer list of good candidate terms that overlap with the query and then you can do a more precise edit distance computation to 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 find out which is the most likely spelling suggestion for the query term so that finishes with isolated word correction